We thank you, God, for last year, and we want to give a thanks offering. We are here today just to dedicate this new year to you, put you at the beginning. We honor you. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. If anybody agrees, somebody say amen. amen. So, uh, we could do better than that. It says, somebody say amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Y'all make some noise one time for Plug Worship, man. They did a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Good job, y'all. Good job, team. Good job, team. Well, you all can get ready, have your seats, um, and let's get ready to jump into the message. Hi, I'm Brianna, your flight attendant on Spirit Airlines. Holy Spirit, that is, where our mission is to get you to heaven, but hopefully not today. That being said, welcome to the plug where people get linked up to God. Wait, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. Join in. Welcome to the plug where people get linked up to God. Wonderful. At Linked Up, our vision is to connect you to God, family, purpose, and community. Here on this aircraft, we have a few rules I'd like to run by you. One, we want to make sure that you're fully engaged in the message. So we have a no phone zone. Say it with me, no phone zone. So please refrain from phone calls and texting during the message. We understand the temptation, so meet Betsy the basket. So keep an eye out and happily take your phone if need. Two, we may experience a little turbulence on this aircraft. So please keep the aisles clear and during altar call, no walking, talking, standing, or moving. Just pray. Lastly, if something in this message resonates with you, you know, it's you and your shanana, we have a special clap that goes like this. Perfect. Now let's get ready for the message. Enjoy your ride, and thank you for flying with Holy Spirit Airlines. Do you know your Bible? You miss, you should know your Bible. What man wrote five books in the Old Testament? What event or person do these emojis represent? What event? All of those? Wow, they got a lot going on in this phone. <laughs> Abraham. No, bro. Jesus, I'm gonna need you to help me with this one, for real. No, bro. Lot was leaving the city and she looked back and turned into something. You're the first one I got that, Jack. How many sons did Jacob have? Three. No, bro. Three. He had 12. <laughs> right, think about it. it. It's a lot of people in the Bible now. Um, What's this event or person in the Bible? It's Noah's Ark. Okay, you know your yeah, Bible. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, Got okay. this. I get some help. It's nice with an M. M? Moses. Yeah. What does standing on business mean? What does standing on business mean? Business. Fitness. 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 That means whatever I'm committed to, I stand on that. You do not compromise your integrity and your character. You better come on. Do all that you can do and just know that his favor is on you to get you to where you got to be. Yes. So whatever I signed up for, I'm in it to win it. Period. period. Yes, period. <laughs> I think it's coming down. No, hold it's on. coming down, my no, foot. No. That's it, Marge. It's coming down. The foot is spoken. Ah, that was good. That was good. Some of y'all don't know your Bible out there, but it's okay. It's okay. That's why we come to church and do devotions. All right. Um, well, good morning, everybody. How y'all feeling today? How y'all feeling today? Last day of the year. Last day. And you all decided to come into the house of the Lord. I'm very excited for that. Well, good morning. My name is Nehemiah Ray. I'm the youth pastor over the plug youth ministry. I want to welcome the online audience. Thank you all for joining us this beautiful, chilly morning. Um, it is very cold this morning. It is very cold. Um, I want to first like give honor where honor is due. And so I am very, I don't know if you all know, but I am like very appreciative of our pastors. <laughs> pastor Gregory and Pastor Trish are, they're not only good pastors, they're great pastors. They do a great job. 
the character is outstanding, right? And that's something that I really love about them. And so I really just want to take a moment just to give some honor. Let's just give honor to where it's due, Pastor Gregory and Pastor Trish. Thank you all so much. We really appreciate you all so much. We really appreciate you all so much. Thank you. I also want to shout out my beautiful wife. She's the one that helps put all the praise team and all the people together for that. God is good. My wife is bad. Amen? <laughs> Amen. And so I appreciate you, baby. Thank you. Appreciate all you do, baby. Appreciate you. Um, but I definitely can't end without shouting out the best dream team minister Johnny at Linked Up Church. And the best dream team has to go to the plug youth leaders. So y'all make some noise to the plug youth leaders one time, one time, one time. <laughs> All right, so today is our invasion. This is a youth invasion where we invade every area of the ministry. And when you all were coming in, we had greeters, we had the praise team, we had people in the media, social media. Um, Helping out with the kids. We got the ushers that got their good shirts on standing in the front this morning and everything. So this is a time where we invade every single area. And, you know, if you don't serve in the plug ministry, I'm going to just put a plug in real quick. You know, come check us out. You know, it's a great ministry to be a part of. But let's get ready to jump in. Yo, we are literally hours away from stepping into another year. A potential year of new seasons, new realms, new dimensions, new opportunities that we're about to walk into. We don't know what to expect. Like we literally have no idea what to expect in this next year. But one thing I do know, one thing I can guarantee you that this is going to be a new season. One thing I love about seasons is this. I absolutely hate the cold weather. I do not like the cold weather at all. But one thing about winter, spring is always on the other side. Spring is off. A new season is going to come. So no matter what, that's the beautiful thing about life. And we can learn from the earth. Seasons come and seasons go. But one thing remains is the Lord. Amen? Um, I believe that for some of you all, this is going to be the best year of your life thus far. Who received that in this room? Who received that? This is going to be the best year of your life so far. And the best year of your life is not contingent on things that happen to you, but it's contingent on your perspective. It's contingent on perspective. How you look at something is very pertinent to how your life is going to go. But we want to make sure there are some foundational things that we want to put in place before we start off this new year. And so what I want to do real quick, if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bible, who brought their real Bible? You know, Pastor Gregory asked that the other week. Let's see a couple Bibles. Okay, look at that. Look at that. All right. If you can turn to Luke 2, 49 through 50, and we're going to be reading from the New King James Version. If you could read that for me, Anaya. Luke chapter 2, verse 49 through 50 says, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about Pause. my... Pause. Okay. It said that I what? Uh... <laughs> Did... That I... Must be about my father's business. There we go. Thank you. Keep on going. But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Jesus said to his parents, why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must... Somebody say must. must. I must be about my father's business. Now, they ain't say it like this back in the day, but for our generation, we don't say business. You, you know, some of the baby boomers, you all talk about, you know, taking care of business and stuff like that, right? But in this time, we don't say business, we say business, you know? The ATL Southside boys, we say stand on business, right? And so we want to make sure that we stand on business um, for this new year. But just like Jesus' parents right here, it says, but they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Some of you all don't understand what stand on business means, right? And so I wanted to give you all a quick definition before we jump in. According to the Urban Dictionary, standing on business means to take care of your responsibilities, to practice what you preach, 
or show that you mean what you say slash you can back up your claims. Not messing around, they are about their grind, all right? According to the Urban Dictionary, standing on business means that you are going to take care of business. And when we talk about taking care of business, we are talking about taking care of the Father's business. Any other business that you're doing that isn't predicated on the Father's business, it's not business. It's a bust. We need to predicate our lives on the Father's business, on the Father's business. Um, no matter if you know that terminology or not, I think we can all agree that if we stand on business, this will be a great year. Amen? Amen. If we complete our goals that we put out, this would be a great year, right? But there's some things that we have to do in order to stand on business, all right? So um, the Bible is so pertinent. The Bible is so profound. The Bible is full of principles, promises, prophecies, precepts, patterns, and prayers. And so this just isn't a book. This is a book that is full of principles and patterns and prayers and things that when we read, we need to be looking for. It's not just a devotion that we do a checkoff. No, we need to be looking for these patterns and principles. We need to be looking for these precepts and promises while we're reading our word because it is full of it. And if you catch hold of some of those principles, it can change your life completely. If you, ca if you, if you catch some of these, it will change your life. And so one of the principles we want to utilize, we're going to study today. But sometimes, how many of y'all, you all know that sometimes in order to go forward, you have to go back. In order to go forward, sometimes you have to go back. And that's why we're going to end this year with going to the beginning, back to the beginning, which is Genesis. We're going to start off in Genesis. Um, I believe this year is a year of bringing back. And I'm not talking about going backwards. I'm talking about back to him back to the things of him, back to the things that he's telling us to do, back to his promises. This is a year of going back, not backwards, because if you go back to him, you always go forward, all right? You always go forward. Okay. If you all can turn in your Bibles to Genesis 1-1. Now, if you could read that for me real quick, I'll try not to interrupt you. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created Stop. the... Stop. Actually, <laughs> my bad. D sit down real quick. I'll get back to you. Because this is, a, this is a pertinent, powerful principle that is in the first four words of Genesis. In that if you catch this one principle... Yo, Genesis is one of the most powerful books. There is so much in there. Like, you can preach sermons on sermons on sermons off of Genesis. But we're just going to focus real quick. Sorry, Anaya. We're going to focus on these first four words. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. This is life changing if you grasp hold of this. If you want this to be a powerful year, in the beginning, God. If you want to do anything new, in the beginning, God. If you want to start a new relationship, in the beginning, God. You want to start a new semester, God. Business adventures, God. New day, God. Opportunities, God. Seasons, God. Relationship, God. Marriage, God. In the beginning, God. Y'all was supposed to, thank you, plug, over there. Thank you for that. In the beginning, if we understand that God has to be at the beginning, then we will, we will build our lives upon something that is eternal. When we build it, God is eternal. And when we build our lives on him, man, it, it changes every single thing. See, something about a beginning, a beginning is an opening. A beginning is a, a, a new season, a new door. It's an inauguration. It's an entering into something. And we're about to enter into something that none of us in this room have ever stepped into before. None of us have ever stepped into 2024. However, if we put God at the beginning, beginning, in the beginning 
God, it will change things. Um, we must be violently intentional to insert God at the beginning of everything that we do. I'm going to say that one more time. We must be violently intentional to insert God at the beginning of everything that we do. Child's education, God. Job, God. Everything, a new year starts with God has to be at the beginning of it all. Um, if, you could, if you could go back to reading, my bad, Anaya. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says... Stop. No, I'm just kidding. Go. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, cool. We'll, thank you. Thank you. In the beginning, God created. Now, I want to stop right there. In the beginning, God created. That word, human beings cannot do this word create. This word create is the word bara, which is a word that is deemed only for someone who is divine. Now, we can make things, but we cannot create things. We can take the things that God has created and make something new, right? We can take a tree and make furniture out of it, but we did not create that. God created the tree already. And so all we can do is make. This word bara is only ascribed to God and God alone. Bara means to shape, fashion by cutting, create. It is always of divine activity. So in the beginning, God created. God wants to be at the beginning so that he could use his power to create something brand new in your life that has never been created before. I, I don't think you all are understanding what I'm saying. If we put God at the beginning of something, he is able to create something within our lives that has never been created before, something that only God can do. See, how can God create if he's not at the beginning? That's called assisting. And he just doesn't want to assist in your life. Now, does God assist in our lives? Yes, he does. But he wants to create. He wants to be the center of our life. He doesn't just, like, creative people. Anybody in here like you're creative? You would consider yourself a creative. Let me see, let me see. So we don't have a lot of creatives in here. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. So something about creative people, creative people love to be at the beginning of a project. They don't, who said, huh? <laughs> Hope that's not somebody from my team. <laughs> Creatives love to be at the beginning of the process. They don't want to get in at the end of the process, and then you tell them, hey, do something with this. Like, bro, you done already did everything you did. Now you want my opinion on it? I'm straight on that. Creatives like to be at the beginning of the process because that's when their juices really start to flow. That's when their brain, that's when things really start to happen. And God wants to create, not contribute. God wants to be at the beginning so he can create and not just contribute to your life. Now, it's something beautiful about God because uh, God can turn all things together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So he can do something with your mess, but he would rather be at the beginning of your decision so he doesn't have to fix your mess. He wants to be at the beginning and make it like stop any of the mess from happening. And he will start that at the beginning when we put him at the beginning. If bara means something that is ascribed to someone that is of divine, of, of a divine essence, that means that if we put... Ha if we put God at the beginning, his divine essence is going to be able to do something that we could never do in our own power, in our own strength, in our own ability. I think us as humans, sometimes we, de we depend on ourselves so much and sometimes we forget about putting God in the beginning. The scripture says, in all thy ways. It doesn't, say on, it doesn't just say when you're making a home purchase. It doesn't say when you are just choosing what school you want to go to. It says in all thy ways, 
acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You know something beautiful about that scripture? I'm going off a little bit. Something about that scripture, it says this, he will direct. Direct means, I looked it up, it means that he will straighten it out. So even when you put God at the beginning of something and you make the wrong decision, he's able to straighten that thing out for you. He's able to take that and straighten it up. That's freeing for me. That's freeing for me to know that even if I make the wrong mistake, as long as I am acknowledging God, in acknowledgement, let me, let me back up. Acknowledging, just, acknowledging is not just saying, Lord, what you think about this? And you already know what you're going to do in the first place. That's not acknowledging God. Acknowledge the word acknowledge has the word knowledge, which means to know. And if you want to know what God has to say about it, you need to get down on your knees. And so if you want to know his way, he'll direct your path. That means that even if you believe it in your heart of hearts, like I believe that the Lord told me to go to this job. And you really, truly believe that in faith that that is the Lord. Even if that was the wrong decision, the Lord will straighten it out. That's the God we serve. But he wants to be at the beginning. He wants to be at the beginning because he already knows the end of how he designed it to work. He is the Alpha and the Omega, and I'm not talking about a fraternity. He's not talking about that at all. Like, don't, don't get offended. Get free, all right? He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning. It says that Jesus is the beginning. He himself is the beginning and the end. If he is the beginning... Why? It would be very wise of us to put him at the beginning of everything that we do. Because if we put him at the beginning, he just doesn't want to be the end. We think too much, like he doesn't want to just be the end where we, oh, we just go to heaven. No, no, he wants to be at the beginning. Because if you don't have him at the beginning, you don't get him at the end. You have to follow him in your life now so that you see him in your future. Revelations 1.8 says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come. Almighty. Yo, this is Jesus right here telling you, are people saying, tell me where Jesus said that he is God verbatim. Okay, it don't say that verbatim, but look at this. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord who is, who was, and who is to come. Who else is that? Who else could that be? Like, that ain't just a regular human. This is somebody that has a divine essence, who is one with God, who is one with the Father and the Holy Spirit. This is who we are talking about here. This is who we're saying we need to insert into our lives because when you insert him at the beginning, everything changes. Um, another scripture real quick. It says, Matthew 6, everybody should know this. It says, but seek ye first the, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. It says, seek him, and actually says, seek his kingdom first and his righteousness. Seeking his kingdom is something different. Well, that's something at a different time. But I learned an example from the late, great Stephen Covey. Um, he, he, he did an example that I learned that I think is very, very powerful. Let me get, uh, yeah, yeah. Clay, could you come up here real quick for me, please? Come on, Clay. Got it. Come on, come on. He didn't know he was getting caught up here. It's all good. I think that life is like a vessel. These small rocks that are in here are like matters that fill up our life. And then these can be synonymous with all types of things. This could be our job. This could be our kids. This could be, you know, um, school. This could be your hobbies. This could be anything that your life consists of. And so, Clay, I want you to do me a favor. If these can, are matters of life, this vessel is your life, what I need you to do is take these, which we are saying our spiritual substance right here. The rocks are spiritual substance. I want you to fit all of these in here, 
Okay? Now, don't break the glass. And it, it has to be, everything has to be flush. Okay? You can do it. Y'all clear, cheer on Clay for me real quick. I said, don't break the glass, brother. Don't break it. No, no, it has to be flush, Clay. Huh? Can't do it. You say can't? No. We cursed? We don't say, we don't say <laughs> can't. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Yeah, she said, just rearrange them, baby. You got it. You got it, baby. And this is oftentimes what we do with our life. As Clay continues to try. This is what we do with our life. Keep on trying, Clay. Please, it looks good for the example. <laughs> we have our life filled up with things and we try to just fit God in. We try to fit God into our life. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Clay, they, they can't fit. I promise you they can fit. But in order for it to fit, you have to do something different. So, you can stay up here, Clay. Thank you. Let's move this over here. If you could pick that up and put that over there. Be gentle with it. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to use these rocks as an example of, like I said, spiritual substance. So if this is God, right? Let's imagine this first rock is the Father. In the beginning... <laughs> look at you all. In the beginning... And so we want to put this rock at the beginning. Yeah. The second one that we need, which is important for our life, Clay, is the Holy Spirit. The scripture says this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. Before God created anything, his spirit was hovering. Before he said, let there be light, his spirit was hovering over the darkness. So you need the Holy Spirit. You don't? You don't think it's going to work? <laughs> and the last one is, thank you, Pastor Trish. You already knew where I was going. The word. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the, in the beginning was the word. And so we have to have, we got to have the father. We have to have his spirit and we have to have the word. The word not only is Jesus, I mean, we know that Jesus is the word, but also the word of God as well. Now, once we put these in, when we have God at the bottom, when we have him at the center of our life, when we have him at the foundation, like the song we was just singing, when Christ is our firm foundation, oh, the rock in which I stand. When everything around me shaking, I forgot the rest of the song. <laughs> it was bars, though. That was a good song. I ain't going to lie. Was... No, nah, I don't remember that song. Dang. All right. But when God is at the foundation in the bottom, then, hold it, hold it for me, Clay. Shake it around some. Shake it, shake it. You got to fit your life around the Lord. You got to move around him. You just don't move. You move around him. Come on, Clay, shake that thing. Shake what your mama gave you, boy. All right, my, pause, pause. My bad, pause, pause. Yeah, that was wild. That was wild. All right. Hold that. Hold that for me. Shake it. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil out. Now, when you predicate your life on God and put him at the beginning, 
everything else can fit. Now, my question is this. Is this full? It's not completely full. It's, it's a lot more that can actually fit in here. And see, when we make the rock our foundation, we can fit more into our life than we ever expected that we can fit. But God isn't a God who just wants to fit. We can now start to even put other stuff into our life. You can fit things into your life. Clay, you can get one of them. Start pouring that thing in for me. You can fit more than you ever expected into your life when the Lord is the rock in the foundation. Keep on, keep on. And the Lord just doesn't want our lives just to fit. I'm not going to spill it on the floor right now, but you all get the point. He wants us to over flow. He wants us to overflow. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate that. If we make him at the beginning, everything else that we desire in life can fit in more. But we must predicate our lives on him. It reminds me of this song, and I actually want you all to um, really listen to this. It reminds me of the song that which we all know, Jesus at the Center. And this is a song that I think is very powerful.
Jesus, it's all about you. See, something that, something about putting Jesus at the beginning, it, it literally changed my entire life. Before we had this thing called Connect 21, it was about 2013, at the beginning of 2013, my life was a wreck. I came home from college, my mom looked at me, and she just said, boy, you need to go to church. My lips was burnt out because I was, you know, chiefing. My, I, I was looking like sin is what my mom said. And so I came to church, and when I came to church, Pastor Gregory was talking about at the beginning of a year, why don't you try something new and dedicate your life by doing a fast? And I thought to myself, I don't know if I really want to do a fast, but I'll try it. Because I believed in God, but I didn't know him. I believed that he was real, but I didn't know him. So I said, I'm going to give this one last chance. Actually, I said, for 21 days, I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to eat any meat. And I'm just going to spend time praying and reading the word. Because Pastor Gregory said, it's not about the food, but make sure you spend time with the Lord. But I took that at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of my life. And I even told myself, I told myself, yo, by the end of the fast, how I'm gonna break my fast, I'm gonna go to a Chinese buffet. I'm gonna get me about a gram of loud. I'm gonna roll that up and I'm gonna smoke it before I go to the buffet. And I'm gonna chow down real good. That was my plan. But throughout that 21 days, it was about, I don't know if it was day 12, I don't know if it was day 15, I don't know if it was day 17, but I know something happened. While I was in my bedroom, praying alone, nobody around, the Holy Spirit flooded my room. And I felt his presence fall over me. And it was better than any molly I'd have never popped. It was better than any drink I'd have never drank. It was better than any girl I messed with. And that day changed me forever. And I had to recognize, I, I recognize, yo, God is real. And if God is real, why would I waste my life chasing other things instead of chasing him? Why would I waste my life chasing girls or chasing money or chasing physical pleasure? I need to chase him. So I made a declaration to the Lord that day. I repented. Repent means that I changed my mind on how I was living. I changed my mind. And when I changed my mind, it was a change to say I was going this way, now I'm going this way. And when I went that way, I said, I'm not going to have sex until I get married. I said, I'm not going to smoke again. Now, I slipped up on that one, but the Lord still caught me. And in that bedroom, I met with Jesus, and he changed my life forever. I'm telling you all, God is not something that we just talk about. He's real. The Spirit of God is not something that just sounds good or religious or any of that type of... No, no, no. He is real. And I'm living proof. If He could change my life, He could definitely change yours. If He can make something out of me, He could definitely make something out of you. It says, God is not a respecter of persons which means that he doesn't respect one person more than the other. If his word said something about you, that is who he wants you to be. And he will cause that to happen. But it takes a sacrifice. It takes a dying to yourself. It takes a dying to yourself and putting yourself on the altar and saying, Lord, it's not about me. Yes, it's all about him. To the heavens. Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes, it's all about you. And so what I want to do during this time, you all, I want you all to be praying. This is an opportunity for you all right now as a congregation. Let's just pray. Some of us, we need to repent in this room right now. Some of us, we, we have declarations, something Pastor Gregory always says is this. He always says, if you could get your life together already, you would have had it together. Clearly, it's not together yet. So that means that you need to spend more time with him. 
See, Jesus was about his father's business. And something about his business that he took care of, he took care of the temple. When people disrespected the temple, he went in and flipped tables. That's an analogy of today. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And anything that is stumbling you, anything that is causing you to fall, anything that is wrecking your life, he wants to flip the tables. He wants to flip the script. He wants to get the whip out and whip it in your life. Whip your life together. So I'm going to give a couple opportunities for you all during this time. If you are in this room right now and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, listen, that is step one. Step one to getting your life right is making Jesus at the beginning. So if you've never done that before, I want to give you all an opportunity with every head bowed and every eyes closed for me real quick. Then there may be other people in this room that maybe you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you're slipping. You've gotten off. You've unplugged from him. It's not that the Lord left you. You've kind of walked away from him. And so if that is you and you want to plug back into him, you can do that today. We call it rededication. We call it giving your life back to the Lord. It says that a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. And so that's another invitation is for rededication. The other one I have, I spoke today about the Holy Spirit. And some of you all in this room, you need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Some of you all are believers, but one thing that is holding you back is that you have not been filled with the Spirit of God. Jesus says, out of your belly will flow rivers of flowing water. He was talking about the Spirit. So some of you all need to receive the Holy Spirit. And then there's others in this room that you just need to make linked up church your church home. I'm talking about start 2024 right by, by being cemented and solid in a place where the pastors and the staff will pray for you every day. When we come up here, we will give you the word of God, but it starts with making him first. So if there's anybody in this room, if you wanna make Jesus Christ your Lord and savior, can you just lift your hands with every head bowed and every eyes closed? You wanna make Jesus Christ your Lord and savior. I see a hand over there, anybody else in this room? You wanna make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Then there's others in this room right now that you want to rededicate yourself. If you want to rededicate yourself and give yourself back to the Lord, just lift up your hands. The only way that we know is if your hands are lifted for us. I see that hand over there. I see that hand over there. I see that hand in the back over there. If there's anybody else in the room that you want to receive the Holy Spirit, the gift of speaking in tongues, Acts says that there is a power that can come over you. If that's you and you desire the gift of the Holy Spirit, just lift your hands for me real quick. That is you, just lift your hands. Or if you want to make linked up church your church home, just lift up those hands. And so now what I want you all to do, I see that hand over there, young lady, thank you. Now what I want you all to do is if you lifted your hand for anything, I just want you to stand on up and come on down front. There's no reason to be embarrassed. There's no reason to be engaged. There's no reason to be fearful. Come on down right now. Let's make a decision for the Lord. Let's make a decision for the Lord today. Come on down right now. Come on down right now. If that is you, come on down right now. Come on down right now. Come on down right now if that is you. I've seen hands go up. Don't let anything hold you back. I'm telling you right now, the, the enemy wants to make you feel embarrassed. There's nothing embarrassing about bowing your knee to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Every human being is going to do it. So why not do it right now? Why not bow down that knee right now? Anybody else in this room? Come on down. You all can make some noise. Come on, you all. We're talking about the true and living God. We're talking about lives being changed for the Spirit, so the Spirit of God can move and flow. Come on down right now. Come on down right now. God is good. He's merciful and mighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on down. I feel like there's a couple more people. I saw some other hands raised that I didn't see come down. Listen, if 
you feel like in your heart, like, man, maybe the Lord's talking to me. Is he, is he talking to me right now? Yes, yes. Nobody else is thinking that but you. He's talking about you. I remember that decision when the Lord was calling me and I was looking around like, is he, is he talking to me? Yes, he was talking to me and he's also talking to you. Listen, there's no reason to be embarrassed. If anybody judges you in this room for coming to the Lord, that means that they don't know the Lord. This isn't a thing of judgment. This is a thing of, man, we are excited for what the Lord is going to do. We are excited that the Lord can turn your life around. So if that is you, just come on down right now. If that is you, if that is you, what I want us to do really quickly, for all of you all down front, if you all could look at me really quickly, just look at me really quickly. Brother, I see your heart is sincere, brother. This brother's heart is sincere right here. Come on down right now. 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 In the name of Jesus. I'll call him forth now. In the name of Jesus. Any spirit that is trying to stop any child of God in here, I bind it up and I call him forth in the name of Jesus. I break that off right now. I break any generational curse in the name of Jesus. Break off now. In the name of Jesus. Actually, I'm getting right now as we wrap up. If there's anybody in this room right now as well. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. You trying to stop drinking? Put God at the beginning. You trying to stop smoking cigarettes? Put him at the beginning. He's a chain breaker. He's the one that came out of the grave. And so we want to recognize him today. So you all look at me really quickly. And I want you all just to repeat this prayer after me, okay? Just lift your hands up to the Lord. The reason we lift our hands is just to say that we surrender. It's a form of also giving him honor. The form of saying, I'm taking my hand off of the wheel and I'm giving it to you completely. I want you all to repeat this after me, but I want you to say it sincerely from your heart. Don't just say it, say it from your heart. And everybody in this room is going to join in as well. Say, dear heavenly father, I relinquish my power and give it to you. Dear Jesus, come into my life and save me now. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again so I can be made whole. Holy Spirit, hover over my life. Make something out of my life. Make me new in you. I receive, I believe that this day will mark change forever. This is the end of the old me and marks the beginning of a new me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, it's one thing to stand up here and say the prayer, but it's another thing to really dedicate and put your life and pick up your cross and follow him. And so something that we want to do is help you through that time. And so we have Minister Diane. She has her Bible up. If you all could just follow her, we're going to take you all to a back room real quick. And we're just going to pray with you and talk a little bit more about your decision. So if you all could just follow her really quickly. Let me just shake your hand real quick, young lady. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you, young lady. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. God loves you. God loves you so much. Thank you, man. God loves you. God loves you, too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, man. Brother, I see that your heart is super sincere for the Lord. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that anything that is on this brother that is causing him to stop what he's called to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you all. You all can go ahead. Y'all, good job, you all. You all. You, 
Now, if you're in this room and you didn't stand up to make a decision, what we want to do is give you another opportunity. We have this thing that's called a connect card. It's in the back of each and every seat. And so what I want you to do is that if you made a decision in your heart, we will contact you. We will help you out through this walk, but I need you to fill this out. And as the offering receptacles go around, just drop it in and we'll make sure that we get in contact with you. Don't let the day go without making that decision that you believe you were supposed to make today. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. You all can get ready to have a seat. With that being said, it is time to get ready to go into tithes and offering time. You all make some noise. Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right. And you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend and following us on social media. Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.